Okay, friends and neighbors, this is DK here with Mr. V Amps, and today we're going to start our adventure of turning this bucket of parts into the amplifier that I talked about in yesterday's video. We're going to do a Smoke and Joe 2. We're going to be doing this in a head uh, for a gent. It's going to have a head and a small cabinet. Um, I'm a little surprised at some of the dimensioning of the head unit. Um, I could have probably made it a little smaller, but at the same time, this thing does get kind of warm. I can understand why things are why they are. Um, but, uh, yeah, so let's just review the tools and maybe a few of the extra things that I'm bringing to the table that are not in our kit. Okay, so as far as tools go, um, you're going to want a multimeter... Shrink wrap tubing is not included, but it comes in handy. Uh, you'll need some screwdrivers. I bring some extra wire to the table. There is wire included in the kit, which we'll be, we will be using. We've got our solder. Best solder you can get um, is ideal. This is Kester. It is very good stuff. A pair of pliers, some small precision pliers, wire snipper. And you will want a standard soldering iron and a big soldering iron if you're going to be using the brass plate. If you're not going to be using the grass blast, if you will not be using the brass plate, then you can get away with using the smaller type soldering iron that we used on the last Smoke and Joe that we built. And you will use a ground bus system instead. Uh, also, you'll probably want uh, some kind of nice bench light so you can see what you're doing and uh, a socket set. The other things that I am bringing to the table here that are not part of the kit, I like these just so I have something to solder to. I have these little ground point tabs. Uh, I will be using a few of these. So um, I think that covers it. Let's uh, get our pieces, parts, and get to work. Okay, so if we begin now, um, I suppose I have to give everybody all that warning crap that if you have no idea what you're doing, then don't do anything because you're just going to kill yourself because high voltage, blah, 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 blah. But uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to install our power transformer. Um, it comes with a nut and a block washer here. Um, and it will fit right there. Just plunk it in there and bolt it down, not tremendously crazy tough. So that's what we're going to do first. Okay, so step one is complete. I, I It's weird, the chrome job inside the chassis looks like poo, but on the face everything's cool. Alright, um, so hopefully you can see all four transformer bolts are screwed in there good and I have those little tabs on three of the four so I've got one on that one right over there and then the one that is really close to the where the uh, electricity goes in there that's where that one goes too so those are those three um, that was gonna be our step one step two and this is just remembering what I had done before. Um, we are going to put in the mounting posts for the circuit board and the circuit board goes in there like that. Um, so our mounting post holes will be this one and this one. Okay, so now our mounting studs are in here and here, and they just have screws on the other side. Okay, this required a slight widening of the hole with the drill. That's different from last time. Let's move on to the next step. Inside the kit, you will find two rubber grommets. Those rubber grommets are intended for the output transformer, which will be bolted across here, so the grommets will go these two positions respectively. Okay, you have to wrestle grommets into place. 
Our output transformer goes here with the bolt holes there and there. The green and black are the output wires, so I would recommend putting them to this side because the output is back here on this side. Um, you will find that the mounting studs screw gets in the way, so you can either manipulate these fins to correct that, or you can just use a few small washers as spacers like I will be doing here. Um, yep, so we're going to do that and then we'll take a look at the result. Okay, so successfully the output transformer is now screwed down. There are a number of washers under there as spacers because of that screw head that holds the stud in place, which you may be able to kind of see it squeaking in there. The wires, I have the green-black coming through, which uh, would go back to the output, which is back here. And uh, the other three are going to go up to the power supply, which would be uh, blue, red, and brown. We're going to do the tube sockets next. On this one, it makes sense to do the output tubes toward the back and the preamp tubes towards the front. They are all the same types of 9-pin sockets. The ones with the retainers are the ones for the power tubes. And the ones with the shields would be the preamp tubes. Um, my suggestion would be to... They actually do uh, give you a ring for a non-retainer version of uh, the power tubes. I like to have the retainers, just me, and then we have the ceramic sockets. So I suppose we should do one of these on camera. So what we'll do first is I'm going to unhook the wires here for the retainer and you will wrestle with them. There's one. There's always a little bit of wrestling when you do these um, for the getting the wires through the holes. There's a lot of wires to contend with here. This is a very physically small and tight um, chassis to work in. And then our tube socket will insert like that. That slips into there. And then this is bolted firmly down to the chassis. Now I'm going to double check for my wiring diagram as to which is closer on the wiring diagram to have the uh, pin 1 over on this side or to flip it and put pin 1 on this side. I'm going to just double check that from the wiring diagram just so it makes it easier and less stressful for me. But uh, uh, the included screws we just, you know, screw it down. No big deal. Let's see. Okay, so we've got our four sockets, uh, tube sockets there on the board, or on the uh, chassis, and we have the controls are up here, so I faced pin one to the front, uh, like is represented on our diagram, as you can see here, do the, f well, let's zoom out, duh, all right, duh, and I printed this in black and white actually for a reason, um, you may want to do yours in color, but, um, uh, we have the controls up front and pin one is facing more towards the front. So I just did that for my own orientation. Um, so that's good. And uh, next we'll put the brass plate and the pots and switch and things on the front. Okay, so I have put the brass plate in the face here and I've done the master volume and the tone pots. The on off and preamp gain volume pot and the input switch I have not, or the input jack I have not put in yet because I feel like they would get in the way of soldering on these tubes had I done that um, sooner. So we will come back to that. 
um, in a little bit. I think this is enough chassis assembling for now and we will proceed to start putting some components on our circuit board or on our eyelet board. So let's get some components. Okay, so I've inventoried the parts and sometimes they make a goof and we forget one or two small little parts. Um, so we're going to get that corrected, but we're going to work with what we have. Last time we did this, the 340 microfarad capacitors fit here. And when you put them there, you find that you are kind of really short the space for the 91 ohm resistor. And then you have a 50 microfarad capacitor and a 10 watt resistor over here that go on this set of holes. So you end up with like no space. If you try to push everything this way then there's no room for that one and vice versa. So we're gonna do kinda like what Trainwreck did. We're going to make a little resistor stack like that and that will give us or a capacitor stack and that will give us more space in which to uh, put our other components. And I'm going to verify we should have the space to do this vertically. Okay, so I have my stack of capacitors in. And the negatives all need to face the front of the amp. So this represents these three. Now to make sure these don't shuffle around, we're going to use a little bit of adhesive, um, silicone glue, hot glue, something like that, just to just to tack them so they can't move. And uh, then, so I can get the tails here soldered down. I'm going to look for the 2.2K resistor and the 10K resistor, which will go in these positions respectively. Okay, similarly to the last time we went on this adventure, it seems like we have a substitution. These higher watt resistors are physically larger, and that's going to be the ones that go down here on your diagram. Um, the diagram here calls for 2.2, and there's 2.7 in the bag. Um, that's going to drop our voltage a little bit more. It'll actually run things a smidge cooler. And if I remember right, there was a very, very similar substitution on the last kit. So I'm not going to fret about it. I'm just going to put the 2.7 in there instead of the 2.2, which actually the 2.2 or the 2.7 measures at 2.6. So not a huge difference. And then this one does measure 10K. That's our big power resistor to drop for there. So this goes here and that goes there. Okay, so our two power resistors, as seen there and there on the diagram, are now in place. Um, because they're power resistors and they do some voltage dropping, they do get warm, so I have a habit to like to sit them up a little bit so they get some more airflow. And we did tack our glue there on our capacitor, so they may ain't going nowhere. Um, there are a few runners here. I may have already shown this, but I'm going to reiterate. You can see the dotted line there between the these two capacitors. Um, I did that with a little J-hook on the leads. And there is going to be a runner between this 91 ohm resistor and this 2.2. So I did that runner with this lead. Um, you can do them with the leads. You can do them with wire or whatever. But when you see these dotted lines, just remember that means something's connecting to something else. Okay, so more progress is happening. On our diagram we have four diodes, all of which are going, they're all facing the center pin point right here. So we've got those two, you know, with their stripe going this way, these two with their stripe going that way. And then when we come to the center point, beneath the board, the center point runs up to this point on the resistor. So I have done that with a piece of insulated wire. Um, and then we come down here and then of course beneath the 22k and the 91 ohm those are connected via the jumper so we're making progress 
Um, I think now, since I've got, since this one piece I'm waiting on because it got not put in the mail, oops, we're going to start down at this end and start to work our way back this way. Okay, so I've been plugging away diligently on this, making this circuit board match the picture for the most part. Um, we're doing pretty good in the order. There was a boo-boo and this resistor here was a wall. It's going to go right about there. And if you recall from last time we built one of these, the uh, pot that has the power switch on it comes right about here too. So we have to try to sit that back and over and out of the way so it clears that. That's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Most everything else in here has been tacked. The only other thing that's a little different from what the picture shows is this 22 in this picture is completely and totally ahead of the hole for the standoff when in reality it kind of jumps over it. So I left this resistor kind of riding high so I got enough room to slip that screw in underneath after the fact. Um, I tried to follow, as you can see, there are places under the board where we go. We go under the board here, and we have some under the board connections between these resistors and under the board connectors uh, over here. Okay, I'm trying to show this. Let's, let's try to get this in camera frame. I know somebody at home is screaming. Look, it's just one dude in a basement filming. Give me a break. Glass Slinger does this all the time and forgets to do things like that and you don't give him a hard time. Alright, so light connections between the one mag to the 470 and the one mag to the other one mag and this one mag to the 22K. These have all been done underneath the board with, you know, either using the leads or wires or the leads wrapped in insulation or whatever. So there are some long ones like from this 10K out to this 8.2. They show this above the board, but I think that's going to be a mess, so I ran that under the board. Um, so I think I've got all of those connections, like where this 100K goes down to this 0.22 or 0.022, and the 82K goes to this 0.022. Um, so I've tried to get all of those in there and in position. So there's still plenty more to do on this amp, and it'll be a little bit of time before the mailman brings me that piece. I'm kind of sad because I like to deliver these amps, you know, ahead of schedule. But sometimes things happen, and a uh, 130 ohm 10 watt resistor isn't something I can just go get at the store. Even our electronic surplus store, I would be varying the value by a little bit. Um, and I look through my piles of stuff and usually big power resistors like that come in pretty even numbers um, they have you know the zero or the the one ohm the or the half ohm and then they usually go like uh, 5, 10, 20, 40, uh, 50 maybe uh, 100 and then they jump from 100 to 150 so 130 is kind of a weird value all right so I'm gonna call this uh, okay for now and I'm going to start doing some of the soldering within the chassis that goes on these tubes but uh, we're gonna do the filaments of the tubes uh, next Okay, before we start with the filaments, you'll notice there are about four jillion wires on the power transformer. And we will not be using half of them. Um, the ones that I'm interested in first are going to be green-white. And there is a red with a yellow stripe on it. So I have red-yellow stripe and green-yellow stripe. These are both the center taps of both the main power and of the uh, filament uh, voltage. And I'm going to be soldering them both right to that grounding point there. I'm going to twist them up and make them neat and then solder them right there, which is reflected on the diagram here. They have 
the yellow yellow red I know it's it's it says on here but they have yellow red and we have uh, green with yellow stripe are both to earth that's what that big triangle is so our ground on here is our uh, chassis okay so those are yellow red and green yellow are soldered to the chassis that is our center tap grounds and now we're going to work on filaments so if we're going to work on filaments we are looking at pins 5-4 on the EL84s and pin 3-4-9 on the 12-AX7s I'm going to use uh, a little bit heavier gauge wire than was in the kit and that's just personal preference it is not required well that was really really tedious I took the green pair of wires out of the transformer and we did the twist the way you're supposed to do to 5 and 6 or 5 and 6, 4 and 5 4 and 5 on the uh, EL84 twisted wires again over to, th to uh, 4 and 5 over here twisted pairs up here to the 12AX7 which in this case 4, 5 and 9 and then again 4, 5 and 9 and then I went and took another twisted pair to run to the light okay there's the the light bulb is uh, over here come on light help us out here I have like this illumination and it still doesn't friggin work we need a recording studio or something here but uh, anyway that differs a bit from the way it is on the diagram the diagram suggests that <clears throat> you take your filament wires and run them first to the pilot light and then down to each of your tubes which is what I did on the first amp however I have found that on that pilot light the tabs to solder to are so absolutely tiny that it just made more sense to do the light last rather than first um, it should not have any effect on the functionality of our amplifier so now we'll start doing some more things here with the tubes okay filming whilst I work is proving virtually impossible but you can see there are a number of resistors and wires and things that are in place basically I've tried to put in every jumper that does not go up to the main board and every resistor that does not go up to the main board um, the way the valves run on this it's a little different than the diagram than you'd think they're one two three four and of course they are drawn as one two three four this way so we're just following the circuit like on valve three we have the 470 ohm and the one and a half K on valve one we have the one K on valve four we have the one and a half K and then we have like jumper wires that run between the uh, tubes so those are placed there's a uh, one jump that goes between the pin nines and there's a jump that goes from uh, three to three so those are those are in place and uh, just making more slow progress here okay so I put enough time on this today I'm ready to come back tomorrow um, our brass plate here on the front is effectively our ground that's our chassis ground for <clears throat> the components on the circuit board and a few others um, to solder to a brass plate like that you will need a big soldering iron that's an 80 water and that just barely has enough gusto to do it so <clears throat> um, we've got as far as what we've got done here obviously we did the filaments today we've got uh, everything on the tubes that does not go up to the circuit board and then on the volume master volume pot we are grounding these two lugs so we've got a little 
you know, one, two, three to the grass, black brass plate. And then this is uh, one of our caps on the tone. It's a .0, it's a .0047 microfarad. And it is going also to the brass plate, um, which is our ground. And I've checked, uh, I've actually taken the little pliers and poked at it and prodded at it and made sure that that really, really is soldered down well. Um, and it is. So I'm happy with that. And uh, I did put our power cord on. Um, like I say, a lot of these wires are not going to get used. So we're going to trim them and tuck them out of the way. On our power cord, the green ground goes to the chassis and I put it on one of those little lugs that we have on the corner and it's just too dark and too cramped to see. So I did it according to the diagram. Um, on the AC cord, the green one, they have it marked to go to ground. I have it soldered to one of the lugs on the corner of the power transformer. The black wire, which is the hot wire, is going up to the fuse holder and then will proceed to go to the switch next. And the white wire, they have it hooked to the black lead of the transformer with the wire nut. Um, I did that, but uh, mine's on, it's over on this side rather than on that side. But uh, I did solder the wires pr prior to putting the wire nut on there. So we're making pretty good progress. Um, I need to get this missing resistor here. And then we'll put wires on the circuit board and we'll put, you know, we'll begin to do that. Um, you can see here on the front of the circuit board um, all of these uh, four spots here one, two, three, four are, you know, shown with this little arrow. The arrow represents ground, so they are going to go to the brass plate. So we'll put those in place and uh, we'll be cool. So that's one day of action. Any of these non-used uh, power, trans power transformer uh, leads, which is a lot of them, we're not going to use the yellow pair, we're not going to use the red pair, we are not going to use the blue with red stripe, and we're not going to be using the blue. So uh, quite a few wires, six, seven, eight of them, just like on our previous one. We're going to trim those a little shorter, shrink wrap them, and tuck them out of the way. Um, and we're going to pick that up another day. So we've had quite a bit of progress uh, on our first day of assembling this. Uh, it usually does take a number of hours, and I apologize for my lack of enthusiasm and being humorous and fun. Um, I do just try to uh, concentrate and uh, get things done. But I would say, considering we started out with a bucket of bolts today and we got uh, that much done on our circuit board, or on our eyelet board, and that much done in the chassis, uh, had I had all the parts and been motivated, this would be finished tomorrow. Odds are it's going to be finished in two or three days because they're going to uh, send that uh, missing resistor through the post and uh, yippee thanks for watching we'll see you in a day or two